I don't think I ever actually explain you a little bit how typically packages are structured, at least the ones I use. So maybe let's start with that today. I want to explain you a little bit how typically I structure my packages in terms of root foldering at least. So obviously on the all the way top, we have our git or .git folder, which contains obviously all the workflows I need for my CI, but also some information about the funding. Um, because of course, sometimes people like to actually help the original maintainer of these packages. Then we have the source directory, which contains obviously all the code of my project. And then we have the test directory, which contains all of the tests of my library. Now, sometimes people literally think that Packages should always be like this, containing the source directory and the test directory in a separate folder. However, let me tell you something. There is a bunch of languages that contain tests and source code in the same file. This is something that a lot of people are used to, but if you go to another li like other uh, languages, sometimes you see like literally the source code right here, and just below they have the tests. Like, just like that, as simple as that. Have you guys seen this already? I know, for example, that Rust uh, gives you this possibility. Have you guys seen anything like this already or not? Once we have our source and test directory, we obviously have the vendor, which is the equivalent of node modules in PHP, kind of simple, but then we have this dot .editor configuration. Not a lot of people know about this, but this is literally just general instructions that every editor will understand about your project. Like one of them, for example, in PHP is that we like to see the edit size of four. We obviously have our git attributes, which is basically all the files that should not be exported once people install this package in their dependencies. You know what I mean? So I'm going to give you an example. If people are doing Composer Require your own library, something you don't want to see on people's is projects is information like the .github or potentially the readme, for example, or the changelog. This type of information does not need to go to the vendor of people's applications. So when you don't want that, you kind of detail all the files here that needs to be ignore it when people are requiring this package through Composer, you know what I mean? Obviously at the end I have the git ignore which contains everything I want to ignore um, in not version, uh, for example the vendor uh, folder. Composer.json, equivalent of package.json in JavaScript and there's all my dependencies of course. Contributing.md allows to basically instruct people how exactly they can contribute to my project. License.md to specify how exactly, uh, what is the license of my project. Now, that is something really important that a lot of people don't think about, but when you are doing open source, you need to see the licenses of the packages you are using behind the scenes. I'm gonna give you an example. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes, some of the dependencies you use require you to follow their licenses which might be the case with, with Playwright. We need to check that and be uh, you can pay attention, you know what I mean? Obviously PHP Stan, which I'm not sure if is PHP Stan v1 or v2, we need to double check. PHP unit.dxml file, which contains my instructions, how I like to have my PHP unit uh, structured. Readme.md, which in the case of past PHP will be a very simple one, which proxies the users to the documentation. And finally, I have my rector.php, which again, I'm not sure if it's updated. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this project 